Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey everybody, I'm a 39-year-old Chris Perillo, and this is your Geek Out for Friday, July 27th, 2012. You got a couple more days for a chance to win T-Mobile's new Samsung Galaxy S3. All you have to do is spin to win. You click the link in this video's description. Or maybe it's up there. Is it over there? I... Where do we put the video description? Where is it? Olympics 2012 Android and iOS apps. The Olympics are here. Like, he, well, not not in this room. That's not really what the Olympics are all about. Although that's probably how you're going to experience the Olympics from the safety of your own home. You know, uh, eating things and drinking things and watching people exert themselves for your pleasure, actually, to potentially win the gold. Are you watching the Olympics? Are you experiencing it in any way, shape, or form? Well, if you have an Android or iOS device, we know of a few apps that might uh, help you feel like you're more a part of the process rather than doing what we're probably doing, and that is sitting and tapping or clicking or tapping or clicking. Not the athletes, the apps. Five great money-saving Android apps for the frugal geek. One of the things Android is known for is the fact that it's free or open source, and that's great, but you know, if you paid money for your Android device, you may be looking for ways to save money with the Android device. I mean, what's the point of buying something if it doesn't help you in some way, and if it's not helping you save money, I would say you're using it wrong. That's the biggest reason to get a smartphone. Yeah, it may cost a little bit of money up front, but if you find these applications that can save you money in the long run, you'll end up making money from spending money. As a matter of fact, tonight, my wife Diana and I are going out to sushi dinner at 50% off. 50% off the entire bill. Thanks to an application that's available for both Android and iOS. How do you guys save money with your Android devices? Can Microsoft beat Lenovo's IdeaPad with docking station keyboard for $500? Well, the rumor that someone started to spread last week turned out to be, yeah, well, a rumor. That's why they call them rumors and why I don't really like talking too much about it. We still don't know how much a Microsoft Surface tablet is going to cost. Like, the basic one, the Windows RT tablet. I barely understand what that is. Hopefully consumers will be far less confused than I am. Humble Music Bundle brings geeky music to the masses for charity. So you remember the Humble Bundle for games? You set your own price and then you can download games DRM-free. They're doing the same thing with music. And at least two of my most favorite artists of all time are participating. They might be giants, who at one point knew who I was and I think they've forgotten I exist. That's okay, I still support them. Uh, and, and then uh, Jonathan Colton, who is one of the geekiest musicians out there. And, and a few others you may or may not have heard of. Either way, set your own price. Help some artists. The most dedicated woman I've ever met. You know, I would not be doing this, what I'm doing here right now, if it weren't for a strong woman in my life. I need that as someone who appreciates mm, the more feminine side of the galaxy. Without Diana, uh, I would probably be doing this. Seriously, that's what I was doing before Diana and I met. I was staring at screensavers. It was really a bad existence. So I'm glad she came along and rescued me. She is the wind beneath my wings. Literally, she, just, she blows. You saw the other day when she sniffed my armpit. It happened in the vlog. Did you see that? That's what, I'm not, she's, she is, she is my other half. She is the one who tells me if I stink or not. And, and she does more than that. Do you have a strong woman in your life? How did you know you were a computer person? Uh, I think for me, it just happened naturally. I, I recognized that I love technology to the point where when I was in the fifth grade, I had a Commodore 64. Well, I didn't have one. My family had one. I, I got to play with it. And it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun that I wanted to do everything with the Commodore 64. It's a little pathetic, but that's okay. I mean, now I've grown up and I made a living from being pathetic. Guess it kind of worked out. I recognized early on that software was very powerful. And then when I first got online in 1992, I was addicted from the word go. Email was everything. Still kind of is. Although there are other things you can do online as well, but uh, the idea of communicating and sharing ideas 
was just a thrill. And the computer was my platform. Well, now these things are as powerful as the computers I grew up with. In fact, I would say these computers are far more powerful uh, 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 for them. They're strong. More malware bites. Prevention or detection? The best defense is a good offense. And uh, one of the things that uh, I've recommended people do is take time when you receive an email to think about what you're about to do before you do it. Uh, and I've been close to being fooled by an email. Uh, it came in, it says, hey, your account's overdrawn. It looks exactly like my bank account uh, or what would come from my bank account, but the details are a little fuzzy. And then when I hover my cursor over a link, it shows a hyperlink that just does not look familiar. That could happen on any platform. I don't care if you're using Linux. You can still be a victim of spear phishing. It's, it's possible that you can open an email, click the wrong link, and find yourself in a bad neighborhood. So don't think this is just for Windows users. You always have to be on guard. And you can't always count on geeks to help you out either. What makes programmers good? You know, I've realized that I am definitely not cut out to be a developer. I can communicate with some developers, but as much as users seem to know what they want, developers have this ego about them. No, I programmed it this way. This is the way it has to be used. But, but, Mr. Developer, it doesn't make sense that way. Sure, it makes sense. If you're me. Thanks for that. Doesn't really help. Software that requires a manual is bad software. I don't care what anybody has to say. If you require training for software, uh, it needs to be redone. For years, I had arguments uh, with people uh, debating the merits or the drawbacks of Lotus Notes over Outlook. And at that point in time, I was using Outlook as a PIM on my desktop. Remember PIMs? Personal Information Managers? Uh, I could not stand Lotus Notes. It was, it's fugly. It's probably one of the fuggliest unusable pieces of software on the planet. But apparently the back end is more robust. But developers have the idea that their way is the right way. What makes a programmer good? Someone who understands the user. And the value of good design and UX. How 3D printing could change our world. You know, I am an adult fan of Lego and awful. A-F-O-L. Hashtag. Uh, so imagine a day where I could print my own bricks. You could do that now. I don't know if I would say it's as a great use of my time compared to buying a set or getting a set as a gift. Of course, I'm a, a fan of minifigs. But there will come a time where you could design something, a model on your computer, which you can do even right now with tools like Google SketchUp and a variety of other CAD software. Bottom line is, instead of having to wait for someone else to do what you want to do, all you have to do is design it, press a button, have it there, a prototype, a working model, thanks to the wonders of 3D printing. And it's possible to do today. It's just gonna get easier in the future. Oh yeah, and more affordable too. Is the tech industry sexist? There's something that concerns me. Uh, it seems that most of my audience <clears throat> is uh, younger males. Uh, I did not do anything to bring that audience to me. In fact, when I started Locker Gnome, most of my audience back in the day were older male. So it seems that I've gone either older or younger. I could never hit anybody square in the middle unless you're exactly like me. You, you may be like me. Uh, I don't know why the way that I do things here uh, seems to attract more males. Maybe it's because the males are more interested in technology, but I know a lot of females who are just as interested in technology. Maybe they're just not interested in listening to someone pontificate about technology. That could very well be the case. Although when I was doing uh, television, uh, it seemed that I worked out very well. Females weren't intimidated by me. It, neither were males. Males looked at me, uh, apparently, according to their research, uh, not the males' research, but the network research, saying, males aren't feeling threatened by you, Chris. So I guess I, I shouldn't take offense to that. I, I, I'm not the type of person that someone would be jealous of. A, a guy, in terms of their woman. <coughs> you know, protectiveness and all that. Hey, I don't care if you're male or female. If what I have to say resonates with you, you 
are my audience. You are my community. And if you don't care what I have to say, move along. Apple to buy fingerprint sensor maker Authentic for $356 million. Ah, so they're getting into the security space. I think this has more to do with making sure another company doesn't get this company than it has to do with Apple wanting to use what Authentic has. I could be wrong, but then again, Apple's going to be making some pretty serious moves in enterprise. A lot of people are replacing their RIM devices, their Blackberries, with Apple's products. And, well, we all know about the iPad. Even if you don't have one, the rest of the world wants one. Google Plus traffic soars. 66% increase in nine months. You know, at one point in time, I was on the recommended user lists, and then I got kicked off. I was told that they needed to make room for other people. I have a feeling I got kicked off because I was critical of Google. And you know what? If that was the trade-off, I'm more than happy not to be on the recommended user list. I have been extremely active every day on Google+. Not many people have. But uh, to me, it's another platform, right? Uh, it's a social layer on top of Google services. It's not really there to replace anything, uh, at least today. Patent Troll says it owns GPS, sues Foursquare. Yeah, I didn't really get excited about checking into places anyway. Unless they offer a discount. Researcher uses NFC to attack Android and Nokia smartphones. Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, iPhone! Oh, wait. Apple updates podcast app to fix performance, subscription issues, and more. It's free! Give it a shot if you have an iOS device. And then you can subscribe to our podcast. We even have the Perillo vlogs in a podcast there, available on iTunes or really any other place you want to subscribe to our podcast. You are more than welcome. Just keep in mind that the free podcast app that Apple has updated still kind of sucks. Lockernome.net user Raphael Fier writes, Can I use an Apple TV with a PC? Uh, not as such. It doesn't have services like AirPlay built in uh, like you might find on other Apple products. Uh, but the thing is, even if you don't have a Mac or an iOS device, you can still get an Apple TV and be very happy with it. It's a great way of watching Netflix on your big screen. Um, and they've got a couple of other services on there as well, but it's primarily for people who live inside of Apple's universe. Today, that might change. Why are Apple users so dumb? There must be a reason. Why? I really need to know. Why? Asks Advsoft on YouTube. Okay, so let me answer your question by addressing something else. Apple's made a lot of money. So are those people dumb for buying products that have worked for them, that they believe work for them? Is, is Apple dumb? Who, who's dumb here? What, why do you gotta look down upon someone else for the decisions that they make? Just because it's not the decision you'd make doesn't mean that it's not a valid decision. Um, you know, I, I would make decisions that after I've done them, consider them dumb, my own decisions. Uh, you know, I, I would never want to cut off my nose to spite my face, but I, I don't know. Calling another user dumb just makes you look stupid. <laughs> Malware. Does that exist? I love Linux, says Samuel Taylor on YouTube. Yeah, because, uh, there are no known exploits for Linux. Can't even, you know, get a worm going throughout the system at all. No Trojans. Uh, what? Oh, that's right. Oops. YouTube viewer TechStory79 writes, Do you think it's possible you'll run out of ideas for your daily vlogs? Um, I'd argue that I ran out of ideas after the first day. Okay, now I gotta go have a life with my woman. We'll eat you later. I don't care about the back end. I'm a user. If I wanted to use a baboon's ass, I'd use a baboon's ass. Doesn't mean I want to. And that's exactly what using Lotus Notes was like. Like using a baboon's ass. It was horrible. It was bad.